All right. There we go. Hey guys, don't have any notes or anything to collect my thoughts. So hopefully this is all coherent. I'm talking about optimal today, best, perfect, and in this case, optimal exercises. These largely in many ways actually seem like a noob trap, but even beyond people that are new to lifting, the idea of trying to get a more optimal exercise, especially when we start throwing in fancy terms like stimulus to fatigue ratio, trying to find the best lift to unlock all the secrets to your gains, that type of things, or <laughs> the notorious phrase of X thing is killing your gains. Like if you're seeing any type of deadlift or killing your gains or insert basic fundamental exercise that has worked for decades is killing your gains or is not optimal. It can be a little bit of a meme sometimes seeing some ridiculous replacements to basic exercises being recommended as what you should replace your stuff with. When honestly, a lot of that stuff is made for views knowing that new lifters, noobs, basically novices are gonna be the primary ones watching it wanting to get better results instead of sticking with fundamentals. So I'm gonna use, try to use me as an example. When I tried to call myself here on YouTube an intermediate, a good portion of the audience said, no, you're more of an advanced lifter. So with that in mind, me, a so-called advanced lifter, is actually going back intentionally to less optimal exercises. Here's the reason why. When you hear terms such as stimulus to fatigue ratio, or hearing so-called gurus and biomechanics experts talk about how this movement may not hit this muscle optimally, and this other fancy movement, which also tends to be easier, hits this muscle better, it works it more, or the EMG data, etc. Strictly speaking, they might technically be correct. The real thing comes down to what's the practical difference. In practice, a lot of exercises that people are being drawn away from by a lot of these exciting, trendy videos are pulling people away from the stuff that works to get you going, to get you started, to build your base. So to bring it back to me, as I said, I'm going back to the basic deadlift and also getting away from the Larson press for someone I, I follow who I've name dropped before and, and will continue to also name drop and you should go check out Bald Omni Man, Paris Butler here on YouTube, much stronger than me, a lot stronger than me. And because of his much greater strength, he has to use more optimal exercises because to him, he's strong enough for that stimulus to fatigue ratio to matter. So he popularized some things such as the Larson press, a variation of the bench press, and what he calls the reach RDL, a variation of the Romanian deadlift. I tried both of those. I loved both of those. But upon some reflection and a brief conversation with him on Instagram, I was able to realize I haven't fully earned those more optimal lifts. The benefits of those lifts and the flaws of the more basic variation that they're meant to replace I haven't reached a strength level to necessitate. So I'm going back to a basic deadlift, a basic close grip bench, and for a lot of exercises, the basics, including basic pull-up variations like wide grip pull-ups. To get to the point to where I'm strong enough and advanced enough to where a more optimal exercise matters. So if you're smaller than me, weaker than me, less advanced than me, and you're you doing more optimal exercises and you're not getting the results you want, put it nicely, you might want to pause and reflect. So on the topic of that stimulus to fatigue ratio and fatigue and stimulus in general, for one, you can't separate the two. Anything that causes stimulus will cause fatigue. And the newer you are, the weaker you are and the less advanced you are, you just aren't strong enough to generate a lot of fatigue. So you want as much raw stimulus as possible. That's where a lot of the basics come into play, a basic squat basic deadlifts, blah, blah, rows, bench press. Those became popular for a reason. Long before powerlifting was invented as a sport, those movements were started by bodybuilders and bodybuilders, to put the history simply, evolved from early strongman, that's put it very simply, who they just were trying to get 
big and strong. And those movements were used to develop the strength and size. And as they got bigger and stronger, they began coming up with variations. And as they had the ability to, they came up with machines or dumbbells and also incorporated calisthenics, body weight movements. Because as they got more advanced, they were so strong that they're capable of generating so much fatigue that it started to make it difficult to have the recovery energy necessary to take advantage of the stimulus. So when you're brand new, you don't got to worry about the fatigue. You're not strong enough to over fatigue yourself. Just get as much stimulus from the basic movements as you can. As you get more advanced, that is where it starts to become more relevant. Because you are so strong, you can generate so much fatigue, you can't make use of the stimulus because you're too busy recovering from the fatigue. So one of the concessions I have made in trying to go with the whole better stimulus ratios and such is for quad training. I'm not doing very much direct squatting anymore because I do direct squatting. Not only are other muscles getting involved besides just the quads, but also systemically my whole body uses much more energy for squat variations. And most of my quad movements have been in the middle or in the beginning of a full body workout. And if I take extra time and extra energy to open my workout with a squat variation, I have less energy for the rest of it. When instead I could get the same or greater degree of quad stimulation on something such as a pendulum squat or a um, super deep leg press and not only potentially get better quad stimulation because it's directly targeting the quads to a much greater degree, other muscles are able to come in less, but I have more systemic energy in my whole body for the rest. On a whole bunch of other movements though, I'm going back to the basics. I'm going back and reworking my deadlift form. I dropped those special reach RDLs for the moment, doing basic RDLs and deadlifts, building those back up. I can definitely tell they are more fatiguing, but I'm reaching for that raw stimulus and re-earning more optimal. I'm doing a lot more basic pull-ups. And actually, I'm even dropping doing some weighted pull-ups to do more basic wide grip pull-ups. As I said, I dropped the Larson press, which is a self-limiting variation of the bench press for people who are a lot stronger than me for more basic close grip bench press or the basic bench press, trying to get back up there. It really comes down to if, if you aren't making the progress you want, the likelihood of it being because you're not using an optimal enough exercise is pretty nil. If you're advanced enough to where you actually need an improved exercise that doesn't fatigue you as much systemically, you're probably already bigger than me, so you don't need to be watching this video. If you are not bigger than me though, and you're putting your effort into a lot of this minutia, including trying to find like the special exercise that'll unlock your gains that'll unlock your ability to get big biceps or to get a big back or a big chest. And you're trying to watch all these videos nitpicking about the different forms or machines or technical things or biomechanics. You are straight up wasting your time. As I said earlier, to put it very nicely, you need to pause and reflect. You need to learn the basics, the basic movement patterns, the basic exercises, basic progression schemes, such as advancing from linear pre periodization to double progression. That alone can already do a lot. Learning why certain splits are selected for fatigue management and volume management, like programming fundamentals is really what you need. A appropriate proximity to failure, how to progressively overload correctly. That is the stuff you need to worry about, not an optimal exercise, not the stimulus to fatigue ratio and all these fancy terms. Start simple. You don't want things to get more complicated than they need to be. If you want to reach your ultimate potential, things will eventually have to get both very complicated, maybe not very complicated, but they will have to get complicated and they will have to get difficult. Don't try to jump to that yet. If you can make good progress off the basics, just working hard at basics, do that as long as you can before you need to make it complicated. Probably just need to cut myself off there. I'll be, I could keep rambling and maybe not make much better of a point. Get as much as you can out of the basics, squeeze as much as you can out of the simple 
non-optimal exercises. Milk those things dry before you move on. In the process, you'll learn their value. When you've used the basics enough, when you've become strong enough to experience their flaws, not hear somebody talk about how they're not the best, but when you've become so strong that you've personally experienced, let's say when you've gotten so strong at deadlifting that you've personally experienced your deadlift warmups taking an excessively long time and just the warmups fatiguing you so much to get to your working weights and then you can't deadlift for a week and a half because it beat you up so much. When you've experienced the flaws of a basic movement like that, then you can worry about moving on because you've earned it. You understand through personal experience, not by listening or watching somebody else, but you know when it, where it can and can't be used for your needs. Then when you try this more optimal lift that has an improved stimulus to fatigue ratio, because it is a ratio, you can't eliminate fatigue. Fatigue is a mandatory part of the process, but where you need that improved ratio and you try this other lift, you can see the benefit of it. That is why even though statistically I'm more advanced than most of the people who will probably ever watch this video, I am pulling back on some of those more optimal exercises so I can take more time to experience the flaws and the non-optimalness of these basic movements. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to say the same thing again another three times. So here we go. That's, thanks for watching, guys.